Thank you, Laura. Okay, I think we got everybody that confirmed. So um, this morning, um, we are very fortunate to have with us Vinny Sabatino, and he is a loan officer in Naples, Florida, and uh, been in the business about three years. And his business uh, started out good, and it's gotten great. <laughs> So Vinny, uh, tell us a little bit about your business and how you started. Well, good morning, everybody. And thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to kind of give you some insights on what I've learned in the last couple of years. And hopefully you take some good stuff away from it. Um, so I've been in the hospitality industry. I was a bartender for probably about 15, 16 years. So that's really how I got started in the mortgage business because one of my really good regulars was a mortgage broker and he saw my work ethic, saw my personality and he's like, man, I need you on my team. So, you know, I was always looking for the next opportunity. So when I first decided to join the mortgage realm, <laughs> uh, COVID hit. <laughs> mm. So I got, so I was thrown into the fire and obviously, you know, when you first get started, you don't know much about the industry. Um, hell, I didn't even know what an escrow was, you know, when I first started. So um, what, do, what, what did I do when I first started was I just got into social media. Uh, I know that you can really leverage yourself in regards to, you know, providing value to people and you can reach people that you would never be able to reach one-on-one. -on -one. So with that said, you know, just started so, doing that, reaching out to everybody. So Vinny, your first year, uh, you said you closed about 30 deals, which is fantastic. Yeah. So how did you come across? I mean, were those through uh, your sphere, your friends, um, the people you met at the, the restaurant? Or how did you do that? It's a great question. So I've been in my town for probably, I've been in my town for about 18 years and a lot of people knew me as Vinny the bartender, right? So um, what I did was I kind of did something a little bit different where I reached out to individuals using social media and people that didn't know me from Adam. So they really didn't have an idea of who I was in the very beginning. So that kind of gave me an idea. Um, so what I did was I utilized Instagram utilized Instagram. I went hard on it, started creating videos, started reaching out to agents. Instagram is the best platform, in my opinion, on how to reach uh, realtors within your area, because there's the search engine, there's the hashtags that you can use, that you can find any agent in the entire world. We have an abundance of agents in my area. So I just started reaching out to them and started having coffee, coffee meetings with them. Um, and just kind of snowball from there. Do you think agents are more on uh, Instagram than Facebook? I feel like it kind of goes both ways, uh, but I feel like you can get a little bit more personalized and a little bit more fun on the Instagram platform. Um, Facebook's kind of catching up right now with their reels and uh, all that, but I feel mostly agents do a lot of their business profiles on Facebook and they're more themselves on Instagram. So that's kind of where I went with my route on that one. Okay. So I'm going to uh, push you a little bit here and dig into, so um, we have some real newbies. Uh, some of them have just gotten their license. So how did you get like the first three loans? I reached out to agents and I had coffee meetings and I didn't really talk about mortgages. Doesn't really matter. Um, I wanted to get to see that if I liked them, if I could right. see a, a partner, a business, a relationship with them. Um, and then once you have that meeting, you know, it's all in the follow-up, you know, you touch base with them once a week. So twice a week. So the agents you met in the beginning, so you're saying you uh, got agent referrals from the get-go, which is really fantastic. And these meetings uh, that you set up with these agents, these are agents that you knew from bartending or from um, just your sphere on Instagram, or they're just totally cold. You just called them out of the phone book. Totally, 
totally cold. And I really, what I did was I utilized the messaging um, on the Instagram. I would follow okay. them. And then I would do something a little bit different because you always want to distinguish yourself from a little bit of different when everyone else is doing. Sure. So there's a really cool feature on the mess messages on Instagram where you can record your voice instead of typing. That way they can kind of, they can hear your voice. They can feel your vibe. They see how positive and, and they can really get to make a decision if they like you on the, on the, based off of your voice. So I would simply say, Hey, Hey, Steven, uh, love your profile. Your content is amazing. Hey, I'm just starting to expand in our area. Just seeing if you'd be open to a cup of coffee, if not, no big deal. And I would blast that to, you know, I'd say 15 agents a day. And that's, um, that's a voice message. That's not yeah. any, okay. And, and then you would, I guess, follow them. I would, then I would start liking, I would start commenting. So they would kind of see me. So I'm top of mind. And then once I got that meeting, you know, I would get together with them, have a coffee, see if they're really cool. See if I like them, see if it's someone that I can really picture myself doing work with. Um, cause if you don't like somebody, you, you're probably not really going to want to work with them. Cause when they, when they call you, you're gonna be like, oh man, what are they going to say? What do they want to know? Or something like that. So I just kind of, it was a filter for me because I want to work with people that I like. And, um, you know, not knowing everything off of is, is, is fine. It's just about the activity. It's creating those repetitive type of income producing activities on a daily basis, which will then yield you, you know, dollars on your paycheck. So any kind of um, structure, so this, I mean, basically you're prospecting um, and you're building personal relationships with these people, um, which I think you, you uh, build the personal relationship first and then they do business rather than uh, do try and build relationships with people that you're already doing business. So I think you, you got it all um, figured out. But uh, my question is, Hold on, ones. We got we got one latecomer. Okay, so um, my question is: um, so at these meetings or your coffee meetings or whatever, what? So what did you talk about? You're saying you didn't talk anything about business, just kind of got to know the person. Hey, what do you do for fun? How long you been in the area? Do you have any kids? What are your what kind of uh, what kind of activities are your children in? Uh, where's the place? Where's the coolest place you've been the last year? Um, do you see yourself moving? What do you love about our area? Um, you know, make it about them and let them talk. And, you know, the people want to talk about themselves as much as possible. So you just keep asking the questions and then, you know, Hey, listen, love, love getting together with you. Now I can see why you're so successful in the real estate industry. Um, you know, I'd love to do some business with you in the future. And then you follow up with them. You know, I have a time blocked on every, every day of the week, Monday, I make phone calls for the agents that I would like to get together with and like to um, do possible business with. Tuesday, if I have a loan in the pipeline, I call the real estate agent, I call the listing agent, um, just to kind of give them an update. And then on Wednesday, I'll touch base with my, my past database. Thursdays, anybody that got out there that's pre-approved and looking, I'll always give them a phone call. Hey, has anything changed? Are you guys, are you guys looking for houses this weekend? Um, and just staying on top of you know, tying and staying on top of everything. Um, I was part of a so program have... and they. Go oh, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, so agents, agents are very um, simple when they have, you know, when they choose people to work with. So the top three things that are pain points for real estate agents are these three is communication. You know, do I want to know what's going on, right? If you don't know what's going on, no one knows what's going on and cause confusion. Um, so that's number one, they want to be talked to and they want to know what's going on. Number two is, can you close my loan on time? Right. Those are the very, very most important two. But the third one is, are you going to follow up with my leads? So if you can do those three things, you'll start getting, gaining business and traction and referrals very quickly from just doing those three things. Right. And I love the fact that you uh, are regimented. You have that time blocked. Um, we used to call that you would set up your power hour every day yeah. to, uh, to prospect. Um, 
Yeah, because you can't just go, well, if you if you just plan on, well, I'll prospect when I have some free time, then you're always going to push it off because it's, you know, let's face it, it's not fun to call people and try and set up appointments. But sure. um, so so that's really terrific. Can you give us maybe some like Instagram uh, whiz kid tips? Absolutely. Uh, Instagram is my favorite thing in the entire world. So um, a couple key t things that I've learned, um, you got to have a great photo, a great photo. Got to have a great photo. So um, define, so define great. Are you talking about the lighting and your hair or what are you talking about when you say great? Up close and personal. Okay. They want to see your face. Um, okay. If you can get a professional photo, great. If not, iPhone photos or Android photos are just fine, but just make sure your face is there. Um, you know, you don't want to be too far away. You don't want to be holding the beer. Um, you know what I mean? Like this is going to be something that people are going to refer and you want to present yourself very professionally. Um, so the profile photo is very important. And then your bio is extremely important. You know, people will decide within three seconds if they want to follow you or not. Um, so basically what you're going to do on your Instagram bio is, um, you're going to have what you do. So on my, my Instagram bio is I help renters become homeowners, homeowners refinance, and I'm based in Southwest Florida. So I also help people obtain snowbird status. Hmm. Um, if you've ever been featured on any type of publication, or you've been on a podcast that will create, um, That'll create basically a value point for yourself. You've been featured in something. And then you have to have a call to action on your Instagram profile. So if you have a, a link for your mortgage application, um, I definitely recommend saying apply. Or if, if you're open to a home mortgage, apply here or something like that and insert your, your, your URL. Um, and then if, you, if you're having trouble figuring out content that you want to create, go on Google, man, go on Google, type in mortgage and, you know, look up the top three things that first time home buyers are looking for and then create a video uh, based on that. I recommend videos and reels extremely right now. Instagram is very much on board with promoting short form content. Um, so those are really difference? good. What's, it, what's the difference between reels and the news feed portion or is it the same am i just confused reels can get posted to your news feed or to your feed okay so you post it on reels and then it goes to the news feed later i guess yeah so reels is a part of the instagram where it'll go right onto your onto your feed okay cool so you talk about professionalism which um i totally agree with um but then I've seen your videos and some of them are uh, irreverent and, um, you know, uh, comical, entertaining um, and all that stuff. So how, what, what's the mix there? So I like to keep mine very personal. Uh, I'm an outgoing individual. So it's my it's my it's how I am. You know, I'm not the type of person that's going to wear a suit and tie 100 percent all the time and and do a quick little boring video. You want to capture those, those are the audience's attention and you want to have something that's funny, um, but also providing value at the same time. And by doing that, it's shareable. So then you can basically leverage yourself a little bit more from there. Um, and I like to keep one profile per, I don't have like a business profile and a personal profile. I marry them together because yes, I, I am a mortgage lender but I'm also more than that. I am more importantly, I'm a husband. I'm a brother. I am, uh, I am a son. Uh, I am a dog dad and I happen to sell mortgages. So keeping it, keeping a nice balance in between, I found to be very important. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Can you, uh, think of a video? What's the video that got the most, uh, engagement? Uh, I got one reel, which had about 16,000 views on it. Wow. Um, it was basically just saying how, you know, like an online lender uh, will basically, could basically botch your deal. Um, mm -hmm. So I always promote, you know, lend local, you know, stay within your local mar market because we have connections with 
different people within the industry that can really help you out. Um, and that got about 16,000 views, which was my most in the, on a reel. Wow. So, okay. So if you don't mind, Vinny, I want to open it up for uh, questions. Um, does anybody have a question? Okay. I see Laura has a question. Go ahead, Laura. I, I have Instagram. I have Facebook. I have LinkedIn. I have all these different social medias. You keep saying real and video. What's the difference between the two? Is the video not a real or is it a time constraint or, or what's the difference? So reels will allow you to do a lot more editing, um, more transitions. Um, but you can also just post an actual video and it's, it can be a long video or a short video. So I would definitely recommend doing reels over that because reels Instagram is really pushing those out to, um, the whole sphere of Instagram. Is there a different place that you go to to make a reel versus a video? Uh, yeah, you can do stories for videos, for short videos, but then you can also do reels. Does that answer your question or am I confusing you? I got it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Nitty. Vinny, so I got the thing that you maybe messaged 15 realtors when you started out. Yes, ma'am. How many rejection did you see before you could see, oh, people are really replying to your voice message? You know, um, that's a great question. So I would say some people didn't answer, right? right? Some people saw it and they're like, oh, it's just another guy. Um, I would say I've, out of 15, I've probably received about three meetings. Okay. Gotcha. And okay. I would put them back to back to back to back because I wanted to capitalize on my time. So. I would schedule one meeting at, you know, let's say 930. Then I would schedule another meeting at 1015 because I wanted to have the agent kind of see that I'm doing other types of, I guess we'd call them interviews uh, with right. other agents, which, and that also capitalizes on the time that you have. And these are in person. Yes. They, these, these were, these were uh, just before COVID hit. Um, and the first three months I, I, I racked up around 60 or so meetings with people. Um, and I also went with my mentor. Um, and so I could hear a little bit of his, of his verbiage, um, on how to speak and kind of what, what agents were talking about. So, um, I did about half of those with him. And then once he, once I did, it was starting to do on my own, then I kind of just kind of did it on my own. And I wanted to really just get to know the individual, um, and see if I liked them. Great, great. Um, Rich? Yep, uh, so you had mentioned uh, kind of minimizing your social media presence in the sense that you only have one profile, you don't have a business profile and a personal profile. Is Correct. that just, just on Instagram? And how do I unpost some of the regrettable things I've done in the past on Facebook? <laughs> You can always go back and delete them, Rich. Okay. <laughs> you can always go back and delete them. But um, yeah, so I mean, if you have it, uh, but if you, if you want to do ads, you're going to need a Facebook business page. Okay. So you're going to need that. Um, but I didn't want to so, double my workload. Yeah. So on Facebook, you'll have two different profiles, but. Right. Instagram, right. Uh, LinkedIn. I'm assuming Twitter, some other things, they're just going to be one and it's all of you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all you all day. So Rich, what's, what's one of your favorite hobbies that you enjoy doing? I like to cook. You like to cook. Perfect. Yeah. So there you go. So you're going to probably put some cooking, maybe some recipes up there. Um, Super Bowl recipes, Super Bowl dips and chips and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, you're going to sprinkle in some mortgage, mortgage knowledge in there as well. So I definitely recommend this and in invest, learn and teach. So you invest your time in learning something and then you teach it and you Finny, give credit to where it was at. Thank Finny, you. Are you f familiar with uh, Gary V's philosophy of jab, 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 hook? You know, I have heard of that. Uh, and I know he had a really nice book about it, but I never got the opportunity to read it. Well, you're basically doing that. So, you, you know, you give, give, give. And then you ask. You don't ask every time because then you're an asshole. Whoop. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So you want to provide the value up front. Um, you know, three tips, four tips, 
you know, you look at the grocery store when you're in line, you know, there's always that, you know, six ways to lose weight during Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? Like those are always the people love to hear these types of tips and that's got a lot of really good engagement. So I definitely recommend uh, doing those types of information. So Stephanie, you are brand new. She is like a shiny new car off the lot. Um, so what are you, are you picking up anything you find interesting? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm kind of soaking it all in and taking notes and stuff like that. So. Okay, cool. So, um, Adam, you're in Colorado, right? Yes, sir. So you got, are, are you, it, the, Colorado is like a haven for anybody who likes outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so do you do any uh, outdoor activities? Uh, yeah, quite a bit. So uh, shooting, golf, biking, hiking, uh, fly fishing, you name it, we're, we're doing it. So, that's so like, Adam, you have, that's awesome. That's like unlimited content. Uh, my that nephew is. does videos about fishing. Um, I'm thinking, okay, who's going to want to watch that? He gets like thousands and thousands of views. Cool. So um, that's great. Um, Adam, actually, you have a really good opportunity, too. So you do a lot of those activities. So do you have any friends or any relationships with any of the owners of the establishments you go to kind of do those, like you buy your supplies from anything like that? Yeah, I do. I know all the, like in the gun shops and stuff like that, I have friends awesome. there. And then same with the, you know, the REIs and those, those professionals who uh, have all the information about where to go and where you're hiking and all that good stuff. So, so you have a great opportunity where you could almost interview those individuals um, and say, and you could, you know, ask three questions of, you know, what type of equipment you're going to need for this. And basically you want to be the mayor of your town, right? So it, it, for like, interviewing business owners, help promote them and they can, then they can promote you. Cause if you're living in Colorado, maybe a lot of people are visiting, but they might think about moving there. So you do an interview, you create value for that, that business. And then after the video is like, Hey, listen, great job. Awesome. Is it, would you be okay if I left some business cards in your shop? Um, just to, so I can help promote my business. And you know, if they know, like, and trust you, they're going to say, absolutely. So you yeah. can do that. And then you can cross promote each other. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you. Yeah. You touched on a topic we talk about a lot, which is trying to be the mayor of your town where people look at you for um, advice and information about a variety of things. And then of course, uh, when they're thinking about a mortgage, they're gonna think of you as well. So uh, I wanna be respectful of Vinny's time. He's got some uh, real, realtor appointments he's gotta get on. So uh, does anybody have any other questions for Vinny? One quick question. Vinny, yes. what's, what's your main Instagram handle? It is, it's clear to underscore close. Nice, thanks. Great. Anything else? Laura's waving, okay. I hate that button, trying to figure out how to unmute it. Um, so Stephen sent us all an email yesterday with some of your, the links to your different social media. Um, I know that you're, you really love Instagram and you were talking about that, but I did go check out your TikTok page. Mm -hmm. Are you getting any traction on TikTok? There. Not yet. Really? Okay. I Not see yet. a lot of realtors, but I haven't seen as many lenders, so. It'll come. Stick with it. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Vinny. It's really been enlightening. What you've been able to accomplish in such a short amount of time is really terrific. And some of us older guys and gals are a little bit apprehensive about diving headfirst into social media, but uh, you've certainly uh, proven its success. It so, does work if you stay consistent with it. So thank you like so Andy. much. And have a great day. And we'll talk to you later. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. You, I appreciate your times as well. You too. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Boy, if I was young and handsome like him.
anyway, um, okay. So we did a masterclass uh, video uh, we watched with Anna Rutolo. And who was able to watch that? I watched it. Okay, I watched it, I watched it. So, okay, so she's a lady. She closes like a hundred million dollars. It's crazy, they didn't really talk about that. But she's a cancer survivor and uh, she got back on the horse and started doing like phenomenal business. Does anybody uh, remember some of her uh, points that she made um, as far as how she runs her business? Myra. There's a, quite a few things, but um, initially when she found out she had the cancer, she said you could approach it and be a victim or you could take control. And she's kind of that person that takes control. So she handled, Absolutely. she said, I handled this like my job. So she interviewed the best surgeons and all that. So that's kind of like, she kind of applied her, her business approach to her personal situation. And um, the one big thing I think she said is you need to always set a plan to win and execute. Yeah, absolutely. So she does. She uh, lives in the structure. And a lot of people, yep. you know, they find people, you know, you first think if I have a lot of structure and I schedule everything, I'm going to feel very boxed in and confined. But it's actually liberating to not have to make all of those time decisions because uh, you already have a, a good structure for the day. So uh, she has- Can I add to that? Yeah, absolutely. So something that she had said was about, you know, like starting small, especially when you're, yeah. when you're making like a plan for like your week or structure stuff that you can stick with, um, which is something that has been really helpful for me with those videos is that I'm not trying to post every day. I can commit to making sure that I can put up something that is a video that you know is at least of some type of quality once a week for sure, and then sticking with that. And then if it organically becomes more, that's great, but at least it's not as overwhelming for me to look at it and be like, okay, I just have to do this one for the week and then, then I'm good till next week kind of thing. Yeah. Right. She um, also had a, um, she had a structure kind of like what Vinny was talking about, certain things she does on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And it seems like, you know, the structure she set up, you know, worked for her. Right. So I'm going to send out, um, there was a plan that uh, we used a few years ago called Power Hour. We set up one hour every day to prospect and they were different. Um, uh, one was for real estate agents. One was for uh past customers or sphere of influence or whatever, but um, it really worked because you kind of mentally were ready, whatever that hour was for you, whether it was 10 a.m., 11 a.m., whatever, then you were kind of mentally ready for it and you, and you stuck to it. Um, so let's see. Um, so that's basically what I picked up is that she has a structure and that she has these theme days and, um, she uses uh, Barry Habib's trainings a lot when she talks to agents. And are y'all members of the MBS Highway? Yes. Everybody, is it company-wide? Okay. So um, that's just an awesome resource. And a lot of the stuff is too financial and too detailed. And then if you go over, he's got some blog. He's got a blog. You kind of have to drill down a little bit. And the blog postings to me are more general and really terrific uh, for, for the customers and the agents. They're not so um, financially in intense. Okay, so uh, moving along. So we're doing a lot of work with BombBomb Bomb videos. Who has signed up for BombBomb? Bomb? Okay, good. Who has done a video and sent it out to somebody? Uh -huh. Okay, good. How was the, how was the, Adam, how was the response? Good. Was good. Response is good. Yeah, people love to see those. Um, uh, what I have noticed is agents who are more seasoned tend to wait longer to open those videos. They're, they're pretty busy and they're like, uh, it's just another email that I don't want to look at. So, well, so we, we did this trick and, uh, um, we, where you hold up a sign and it's, so you know what I'm talking about? Cause they do it in their training. 
you, yep. you hold up one of those little whiteboards and you just get the little one that's like, I don't know what it is, 10 by 12 or something, and you put their name on it. And then the curiosity is overwhelming. How can you not open a video if you see some sign with your name on it? So, and the videos say like 45 second video. So they know that uh, it's gonna be something quick. So any of you guys who have not signed up for BombBomb, I highly advise it. At least you can sign up for the 14 day free trial and try out a few videos and see what response you get. Um, I one thing that I did see, Stephen, that was interesting is a lot of the agents open it multiple times, um, three, four, five times. They'll watch it over and over. So that's great. Yeah. So that means that they really like it. Okay. So um, the, we, we're going through the bomb bomb training. And the, the one thing that, that we uh, went over this time were thank you videos. So a couple of things that they pointed out, uh, thank you videos were think about trigger events or the milestones in the load, or uh, you know think about excuses to do a quick video, whether it's a thank you for the referral, thank you for doing a loan application, or like uh, you know Lauren sent me one that was a terrific example. Thank you for choosing uh, me to do your loan. Um, the other thing that you can do is after you meet with an agent, you can send them uh, a video and mention some things in the conversation. And that lets them know that you're really listening to them. Like, um, I understand that, um, 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 you know, that you want us to call you when the appraisal comes in. I understand that's important to you. I wrote that down. And then if you mention some things that they say, then, then um, like I said, they'll know that you're really listening to them. Okay. So um, another thing is you can, you can thank them for doing business with you, which we just discussed. You can thank them for filling out forms and applications. Um, you know, the other thing that uh, uh, when you set these meetings, uh, like Vinny was talking about with the real estate agent, calls 15 agents, sets meetings. Unfortunately, sometimes you get no-shows. And the video is kind of a way to help prevent no-shows. Um, so you can make a video that says, hey, thanks for agreeing to meet with me. I really look forward to it uh, on Tuesday. And I mean, they kind of, they see your face and your excitement. So they really have to kind of be a miserable person not to cancel properly or um, if they can't make it <laughs> a reschedule with you, right? I mean, um, and then the other thing is you just think of a, a, you know, an odd reason to make a video when they least expect it. So. They're not, you know, it, it, there's no event that's happened. So they're more likely to open it because their their curiosity is, you know, why are they sending me a video now? So um, any other ideas? Can anybody think of a, a reason to send a video? Nitty, why, why did you send yours? Why did I send mine? Yeah, what, what triggered you sending your video? because I'm too much into videos now. I have left my shyness, camera shyness. And every time if I'm talking to someone, I'm sending them the video. Like one of my buyers just got into the contract. He hasn't sent me. So I just sent him a video, congratulations, instead of messaging him. Okay, yeah, okay, so an event, like congratulations on your contract. That's really terrific. Okay, I mean, we're just trying to look for things that give us a little bit of a, an edge over the competition. And it's going to be that personal connection. But how do you get a personal connection? The person won't even answer your phone calls or return. I mean, you know, you can send an email, but how do you make a personal connection over that? So these videos are really a terrific tool for that. Okay, so we talked about some real estate podcasts. And I know a lot of y'all probably listen to mortgage podcasts. But the purpose of listening to a real estate podcast is so that you can uh, add something of value when you talk to an agent. You can say things like, hey, I just heard this podcast from this $100 million producer in California, and he was doing this thing. And then they, you know, that whether they like the idea or not, they think that you're looking out for them. So does anybody have a podcast or an episode, an episode of podcast that they listen to? 
Well, I listen to a, a real estate podcast called Real Estate Uncensored. Okay. My husband. Does that mean they curse a lot? <laughs> yeah, they do. But I, that I, that makes me like them. So it's okay. But um, my husband actually referred me to them after our meeting last week because he likes them and he listens to them. Now, the episode that I managed to touch or, you know, listen to wasn't, it was pretty baseline. It could really work for everyone. I don't think it gave me any information that is just particular to realtors. So I could look more for a specific episode like that, but it was more about, you know, creating content and getting out of your own way and learning how to be comfortable in front of video, you know, that kind of stuff. So. Okay. And um, the great thing about podcasts is they're free and there's so many of them you can just flip through and pick the ones that are interesting. And I subscribe to several. And if they start talking about mobile homes, I just click the button and go to the next one. So um, Ian, are there any podcasts you listen to? Well, I just got introduced to Brian Buffini. Oh, okay. He's an old, old schooler. Yeah. Uh, and that was through an old school LO who works with a lot of old school realtors. Um, so I haven't, listen to his podcast yet i've been listening to a lot of his youtube content and okay, uh yeah. taking some hand me down tips from him uh around establishing relationships right so he is a real estate trainer he's probably one of the most well-known in the industry been in business at least 20 years and uh, yeah so he has a lot of good tips and then when you talk to an agent you can throw one out there and they think that you're a real smart guy who cares about them so yeah, that uh, brings, uh, brings me real quick to um, thank you notes and I'm seeing how Bon Bon can go and what he did. One of the, I think, uh, personal acknowledgement notes, you said, why would you send Bon Bon, you know, and then uh, uh, media, I think you, you nailed it, is uh, acknowledging anything. Just thanks for being a great person. Right. And, and it's not really, in my eyes, a replacement for handwritten notes. Um, I still like the idea of getting a handwritten note, um, but you know you can you can mesh it in with that same theme of uh, contact points, meaningful contact points. Can I ask so, a quick question about handwritten sure. notes? Has anybody used handwritten or any of these services? Are they as good as an actual handwritten note, even with a horrible handwriting like I've got? So we've talked so. about that several times, but I don't okay, think anybody's sorry. actually used it. But no, I think it's a good idea. What I would recommend is go ahead and pay to have a note sent to yourself and then yeah. look at the feel because you want to, it's got to look like ink. I know now they have like um, those printers that actually write with a pen and all yeah. that. So yeah, I would spend the Thanks. two or $3 and send one to yourself and make sure it looks uh, really authentic. So Jason, so you are new to uh, the call. So where are you out of? Okay, so we'll hear from Jason later. So, okay, any other, uh, so there's real estate rock stars that I listen to, and there's also a massive agent podcast with uh, Justin Brom, which I think is another good one. He's a pretty interesting guy. Um, so I highly recommend, uh, you know, going on, um, you can go on Google and put top 10 real estate um, podcast and pick one from there. A lot of them are about people that want to invest in real estate, which is a little bit off target, but, uh, and you can also uh, Google the, the top iTunes podcast for real estate. All right. Any other uh, questions or topics we want to cover? Okay, we Stephen, how, how do I uh, watch your the recorded ones that I've missed? So I'll send you a link, but on um, if you go, I always post a follow up with the link and I also put it on that. Are you on Van Dyke's Happenings? I'll figure it out. But OK, so your no, no, emails no. have the link and I missed that. OK, but I'll, I'll email it to you. I'm making a note right here. Awesome. Uh, Thanks. And um, are you on uh, the Van Dyke's Happening Facebook page? So I will be. Yeah, please, everybody, make sure you're on the Van Dyke's Happenings uh, Facebook group. Uh, there's all kind of company information and so forth uh, that I pick up on there. 
Okay, uh, any other questions? All right, we're ready for the infamous 10 questions. You ready? These, this is our, uh, our uh, weekly contest for absolutely no prizes, but our admiration. So question one, what is the maximum debt ratio for VA loan? Just want to throw it out there. Somebody raise their hand or something. Okay, Nitty. 66%. What? 66, 66. 66%. Okay, how'd you come up with that? Okay. Oh, it's 65. Is, yeah, is, is Nitty right? Is Nitty, Ian, is Nitty right? I thought it was, I was just going from distant memory, guessing 52 ish. Okay. So there is not a firm number. It's just a question of what you get DU to take. I just got a 63 approved. I thought that was pretty good. So it does a behind the scenes scorecard. So if you have excellent credit and good reserves, it'll let the debt ratio go super high. I wouldn't pre-qualify anybody, those kind of numbers. But uh, yeah, if you need that, a VA is the ticket. So, okay. so. Through the uh, bomb bomb training, if you watched it, what kind of script should you use when you do a thank you video? Some of these could be trick questions. No script. Ian is right. Don't use a script. Just say like you were talking to him and it'll come out much more natural. Okay. So, um, Last week, the average price of gas, they said, or maybe it was Monday, they come out with this number, $4.17 nationwide. Now, adjusted for inflation, what was the last year that gasoline was this high? 1982. 2006. 87. Okay, those are all good guesses, but the it's truth never is been this high. it's never been this high. Even adjusted wow. for inflation, it's never been this high. So a little scary. Okay. Um, so if you were doing a $500,000 refi uh, going uh, LP, what is the maximum cash that the borrower can take out without it flipping the switch and making it a cash out refi. $2,000. Ian says 2,000. Rich. I agree with that. I see you thinking about it. I, I'm taking it all in. I'm, I'm a newbie, I'm, I'm taking it all in. Okay, what city are you out of? Uh, so I'm at, I, I live in South Carolina, but I'm working with uh, Tim Hart out of his, uh, 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 center there in uh, okay. Fort Myers, well, you, yeah. Well, you have an excellent mentor there in Tim Hart, I can tell you that. But Thank anyway, you. so the answer is with um, Freddie Mac is it's the higher of 1% or 1% um, of the loan amount or uh, $2,000. So in this case, you could take out $5,000 and still would not be a cash out refi because it's a $500,000 loan. Anyway, so Fannie Mae makes you take the lower of the two. And uh, this is one way uh, that can help you uh, get the borrower a little bit more cash out. Okay. Who is the chairman of the Federal Reserve? Raise your hand. We talk about the Fed all the time. Who's the guy? Who's the chairman of the Federal Reserve? Janet Yellen. Who? Janet Yellen. Janet Yellen. So she was about eight years ago. Jerome Powell? Yes, Joyce is correct. Jerome Powell. Did you know that or did you Google it? I knew that. Okay. 
Yeah. So uh, if you watch CNBC, he's on there sometimes uh, giving his delightful testimony that will put you to sleep in two minutes. <laughs> okay. Here's a question for the newbies. So why is it the APR higher than the note rate? Why does it seem to always be higher than the note rate? Does anybody know what APR is? Annual Besides that it stands for annual percentage rate? Includes all your fees, taxes. It's kind of your, your bundled number at the end of the day. It includes everything. Who is that speaking? Adam. Oh, you, you came over fuzzy. Okay, so um, it right. is kind of a bundled number that the, the government tried to make it easy for customers to shop. So they came up with this effective yield if you were to back out a closing cost. So if you had a $100,000 loan and there were $5,000 in closing costs, you essentially are walking away from the table with $95,000. So what they do is they say, okay, well, the payment was 300 a month. So if we keep the same payment and we figure you're only getting 95,000, we can do a reverse calculation and give you an APR. So if it was 4%, $100,000 loan, payment was $300, and then we do our little backwards calculation, backing out the closing cost, then they're going to say, okay, well, the rate is really like 4.15 because your, your loan amount smaller. Does that make sense? Okay, it's, it's pretty much worthless because uh, what you'll find if you were to, to like make a, uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet is that the more discount points you buy, the lower the APR is gonna be. But, so it would look like you could just buy, five, you know, you could spend $20,000 on closing costs and get the best deal in town. Well, that would be foolish in my opinion. Um, so, uh, because the discount points are figured at somewhere around a seven year payback for the lender. But if you do it on a 30 year scale, then it looks like the discount points are a terrific deal, which they're really not. So does that, does that make any sense? So because you're, you're reducing the loan amount by backing out the closing cost, the effective yield is higher. So it's always gonna be higher. So what would the APR be if the closing costs were zero? It would be whatever the interest rate was. It would be the same. So the note rate and the APR would be exactly the same if the closing costs were zero. Does that kind of make sense? Listen, I've never, government... heard, you. I never heard the, the reason you just gave why APR is a worthless number I'd never heard that described or explained that way, but I get it. And I've always tried to explain to people why it doesn't make sense and I've struggled with it. So that's helpful. Great. And just to uh, confuse everybody, on an, the, the way they figure on an adjustable rate mortgage is so insane that the APR is 100% worthless. So anyway, Okay, so um, where are we? We're right here. So we now have baseball. Who's excited about that? Nah, I don't really care. So, but let me ask you this. Starting this year, what is the minimum salary for a major league baseball player? 500,000. That is a good guess, but that is incorrect. Anybody want to guess? What's the minimum? The guy, the last, the worst guy in the league just barely made the team because some other player broke his leg. What is that guy getting? 68,000. That's what Six, I was thinking. What'd you say? 68,000. No, no, no. <laughs> These are professional athletes. Too <laughs> much. What? I said too much. Okay, it's $700,000. You could be the worst player in the league. Your minimum is seven hundred thousand dollars. Used to be five forty. Never play a game. Darren, we need to go to 
the baseball. Yeah, I'm trying out for the Braves. <laughs> so you got so Nitty, you got your son working on his uh, hitting. No, I'll do the thing. Let him stay at home. I hey, make fun. I think in bat. I think in the NBA, it's like eight hundred thousand. It's even higher. Okay, it, it is higher. Yes. What's yeah. What's the average length of a career? About half a season. Uh, in Major League Baseball. <laughs> yeah. So I have no idea. I think in most professional. Uh, I think in football, it's three and a half years. But um, no, in baseball, the disparity is if you get sent down to like triple the minor league, it, it falls off a cliff. It's like a thousand a week. I mean, yeah. it falls off a cliff. It is like sixty thousand for triple A, um, maybe even less. Okay, so okay, so how many basis points in theory would it take? You know how you get the little thing where it says it's off so many basis points, and then Barry Abib calls with a panic call. Okay, so thinking in big numbers, how many basis points would it have to be off to change the interest rates 1% in rate? So if we're at four, we wake up tomorrow, it's five. So how many basis points would it have to be off? This is more theoretical than exact, but can somebody take a stab at it? This is completely a guess, but 320? 320. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a good guess. Anybody else? I'll try, though I'm still trying to figure out the maze that I get, I'm looking like them as if I don't know, but 100 base point. 100, okay. So uh, it's, four, it's four to one. So it would be about 400 basis points would equal 1% in rate. So when you when you wake up in the morning and the thing's buzzing and it's off nine, right? It's like nothing. So um, do do people understand? So how, what is the value? So let me ask you this: on a hundred thousand dollar loan, mm. what is one basis point? Stephanie, I'm going to ask you this because it was on the test. A hundred thousand dollar loan. What's one basis point worth? I didn't remember. <laughs> I didn't. It's like six months ago. <laughs> um, I don't know. Anybody want to take a guess? Thousand dollars. A thousand dollars for one basis point. So what you're saying is, Adam, that's one point. One point would be a thousand dollars. But what a, a base. So so here's right. how it goes. So. Adam's right in the fact that one point would be a thousand dollars. Then you move the decimal place one spot over and you have a tenth of a point. And then you move it one spot over and you have a basis point. So it's just another way to express it. So on a hundred thousand dollars, one basis point would be ten dollars. So um you know, we're not, we talk about it sometime, but if you want, I can do a class on what, you know, the market movement is because yes. I think you, great. Yes, okay. do it. Please do it. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to just give you one sentence, but we'll do, we'll do, have a class and we'll dig deep into it next time. The one sentence is that it's not so important how the market opens and closes. What's important is where we priced. And Van Dyke prices at around 10.30 a.m. So that's the point you gotta look at. So it's not so much that we're up you know, 50 basis points on the day. If we priced at 10.30 a.m. and we were up 60 basis points, we're actually worse. Does that make sense? So, they take their reading around 10.30 and less they're running late and then it's around 10.45. But that, so that's the point that you gotta look at every day. If you subscribe to one of these fancy services like MBS Highway or whatever, he'll actually tell you, okay, here's the difference from 10.30. He, he knows that lenders usually price it 9.30, 10, 10.30, 11. So he lists those so that you can see. And that's really the important number. But we'll dig into that. Uh, later. Okay. Uh, 
everybody knows, I hope, the U.S. and China are, are fighting to have the world's largest economies, right? The U.S. has the world's largest economies. China is uh, nipping at our heels. Who has the third largest economy in the world? What country has the third largest economy in the world? India? That is a good guess, but no. No, India, no. Russia? Russia or? So Russia, believe it or not, is not even in the top 10. People don't realize this. Russia is a poor country. Their per capita is one fifth what the U.S. is. So, uh, Pam. go ahead. Who, who said what? Japan. Stephanie, ding, ding, ding. It is Japan, believe it or not. That little country in uh, landmass does uh, terrific business. So they are the third largest economy in the world. All right. So um, borrowers are always looking at the bottom line cash at closing. One way to upset a borrower for sure is to tell them that they need a certain amount of cash at closing and then they need more than that. And, uh, you know, it's not even the money at that point that, you know, they just don't like the fact that you didn't tell them correctly. So uh, give me three things that are three fees that a borrower could get hit with that are not on the initial LE, which is the initial uh, loan estimate. Condo transfer fees. Transfer fee, transfer tax. Condo, so, yeah. So we have to put we put that on the LE. Discount points. Discount. So if they chose a loan later, they locked a loan and it had discount points. We wouldn't have put it on the initial one. Okay, I'll take that. Sorry, Come Stephen, on, that wasn't clear. I I should have said HOA transfer fees. Oh, look at Adam trying to go back and change his answer. But you are absolutely correct. So uh, HOA transfer fee is one that can burn you. Yeah. Jason, are you there? Give us something. Lauren, give me what a about fee. That, the, what about the homeowner's insurance? Well, so we do put an estimate of the homeowner's insurance. It could mm -hmm. be more. Mm -hmm. What, what about uh, home inspection? No, we, we don't put that on the closing we, cost. We don't put it, but the borrower typically uh, almost always gets a home inspection. It's three to $400, right? <clears throat> That's a cheap one. That, that'd be nice to okay, have. Okay, four or $500. What about if their neighbor's got a fence up? Survey? Survey. We don't include a survey. Well, in Florida they do, but everywhere else we don't include a survey. That's something that they may want or need that mm -hmm. they don't have. Um, and what about uh, if they decide to buy a condo? Mm -hmm. We have internally, we have a condo approval fee. We have to send in paperwork and especially now after that uh, building collapsed in Florida, there's a little bit more extensive approval process. I think it runs 250 or $300. 300? 300. So that's another one that is not on the initial LE. So um, anyway, did I miss anything? Nope. I had a borrower buy a new home construction, the honest to God's truth, new home construction, and they charged him for the mailbox. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you think if you spend a half a million dollars, they'd throw the mailbox in, but they didn't. So, okay. Um, well, that's all I've got. Anybody have anything they want to say? I can make uh, one quick announcement. I will be out of town. Uh, next week. So it's going to be two weeks before we have the next one. I'm going to send out 
um, some notes with some action items for us, and, but you'll have two weeks to do all those things. Any questions, Rich? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was very good. I appreciate uh, being invited to this. I, I took a bunch of notes, so thank you. Okay, thank you. We enjoyed having you. Sure. All right, everybody have a great day. See you in two weeks. Bye. Bye, everyone.